Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside Alumni Stadium here, or Alumni Field at Stan Skosen Stadium here in Independence, Ohio. We are going to turn it over to the PA announcer for all of your introductions and national anthem. Starting lineup for the Independence Blue Devils. Freshman number 16, Alana Noah. Freshman number 11, Casey Adams. Freshman number 2, McKenna Rini. Junior number 20, Sophie George. Junior number 13, Alice Adams. Junior number 19, Hannah McCrail. Junior number 12, Maria Polito. Senior number 22, Captain Paige Westerberg. Senior number 14, Captain Rachel Felix. Senior number nine, Captain McKenna McGee. And senior number 17, Captain Raquel Di Geronimo. Independence's head coach is Brian Lust, assistant coach is... All right, and back up here in the press box here as the... Uh, we do want to turn over to the national anthem real quick for you before we get this game going. And again, welcome inside Alumni Field here at Stan Skosen Stadium. Kevin Arnold alongside me, Steve Hare tonight. And we are here for this sectional final in Division Three, Region 9 between, it is a battle of the Blue Devils, between the visiting Wycliffe Blue Devils and Independence Blue Devils who are hosting this matchup here tonight. We want to give you our senior spotlight presented by Pixel Connection real quick. On Wycliffe's side, Morgan Gabriel, who has a career of 101 points that is 39 goals, 23 assists, and Wycliffe is 48-18.
and six in that span. On the other side, Raquela Di Geronimo. She has amassed 124 points in her career with 46 goals and 32 assists. Team record of 44, 24, and five ties. We also want to thank the rest of our, uh, our other sponsor, our title sponsor here tonight, Gables Search Group. Kevin, you're pretty familiar with this Wycliffe team, is that correct? I am familiar with this Wycliffe team. Of course, this is uh, going to be a very uh, two-sided affair during this broadcast here tonight. But I've uh, been coaching soccer for a long time and grew up playing soccer in the city of Wycliffe, so I know the Wycliffe soccer program very well, but have played against Independence myself and have coached against them for a long time as well. So two schools that definitely want to try to possess the ball, try to get opportunities up top and try to get those seniors that we highlighted there, Steve, in the beginning of the game, try to get them involved early, and they will definitely be ones to play off of and make their other teammates better as well as we see Wycliffe with an early opportunity down in their offensive third of the field. Eliza Wills down there in the corner trying to get trapped there by a couple Independence defenders. A little give and go there tight along that end line, but they, they will earn – Looks like a uh, looks like it is a corner kick opportunity, or they are calling that back for a goal kick. Actually, going off the end line, going off of Eliza Wills, and it'll turn it over to Independence. Keys tonight to victory for both teams. Independence, they will try to defend their home turf. They are six and two at home this season, and they want to spread the wealth. Five players on this Independence Blue Devil team has four or more goals, first time in 15 years. Uh, Brian Les, the head coach, has had more than one double-digit score, uh, and that is three this season. They also need to stay focused. No lulls. Can't have those lulls out there in possession or in defending on either side of the field. They want to be in attack mode at all times. As uh, we'll get our wick of keys of the game in just one moment here, where Kella Geronimo taking an early shot from deep about... 20 yards out, that goes off to the left outside of Kaylee L'Oreal's goal, and that'll be a goal kick for Wycliffe. Just two minutes into this first half here, tied at 0-0 in this sectional final here tonight. These two teams, of course, met in the district final, an epic district final last year where Independence won 2-1 to one in overtime and kind of coming down towards the end of the clock in overtime as well in those golden goal rules that the Ohio High School Athletic Association uses. And this time, Independence will just kind of play out of the back, play it back to their goalkeeper. But Morgan Gabriel, the, the senior, trying to feel like she was trying to chip as the goalie had come off of her line, but uh, just goes right into the goalkeeper. That is Maria Bolito, uh, who comes in with 78 saves on the season, 93 for her career, the junior goalie for Independence. And some end-to-end -end action as we get underway here. Katrina Haynes trying to defend there, gets the ball dispossessed. Cross comes in. Emily Wills for Wycliffe able to clear, but only as far as De Geronimo. She takes a shot, trying to go for that far post and not far off. That ball just kept trailing. She was trying to get a little bit of that backward spin on it to curl in that far post, but not able to do so. And again, it'll be another goal kick. So Independence with the early pressure. Keys to victory for Wycliffe. They have six seniors who have to shine here tonight. 33 goals and 17 assists combined amongst those six seniors. They need to feed Morgan Gabriel, as we already kind of mentioned here tonight. She will get those scoring opportunities, but she's also the one that takes the corners for Wycliffe, so she gets other players involved as well. As well. So if she gets going early, Wycliffe's offense can really pick up in on that end of the field. And lastly, their goalkeeper, Kaylee L'Oreal, 
is always direct and always uh, putting her defense in the proper positions back there. She actually comes in on the season with 117 saves, 271 on her career, and six shutouts this season with 26 shutouts throughout her career. Uh, this ball coming in from Mia Wilms, trying to feed Macy Andrakovich down the right line, this near sideline, and that ball will go out of bounds for a goal kick. So a few early opportunities for both teams, kind of getting those shots off of from Raquel DiGeronimo for Independence. Wycliffe yet to be able to get a shot off towards goal, but uh, some early opportunities deep in that offensive third. Anyone just tuning in for the first time to OhioVarsity.com to a soccer match here tonight, You'll hear things like offensive third, neutral zone, defensive third, as in the, in the game of soccer, while it is broken, the field is broken in half by the lines, as a coach, you're always teaching your players, you're breaking it down into three pieces. You have to be able to defend, get that ball out, win the 50-50 balls, balls that go between both teams in that neutral zone, and once you get into that offensive third of the field, that's where you really want to Get quick possession, quick passes going. Try to get some early opportunities for some of your forwards and midfielders running through the middle of the field or some crosses from your outside outside backs. So some possession here from both teams going back and forth. Ball coming in. Manny Sbgerko trying to clear, and Independence will try to get the shot off. Haynes able to clear that one only as far as Alex Adams. DeGeronimo will pass out to McKenna McGee, and that ball will just trickle on into L'Oreal's goal box, and she will pick that up and clear this one out for Wycliffe. Six minutes in, 34 minutes left here in the first half as we play two 40-minute halves here in high school soccer. And quickly, 50-50 ball, early possession, going to Independence as they are winning those balls at midfield and able to get back on the attack. A good shot coming in here and having to... Punched that away and jump on that quickly was L'Oreal. That shot coming in from Alex Adams. She already has 13 goals on the season and six assists. So in the past, Independence has tried to feed through uh, their forward up top, but now they have, they've built more and more options as the years have gone on, and they have some goal-scoring opportunities, and they can shoot from deep, and that'll, that may pull Wycliffe's defense out and give them those opportunities inside the box later on as we will see Eliza Wills called for offsides as she was standing too close to the Independence goalkeeper past the last defender for Independence and Independence will have a free kick right around that 35 yard line as you see most high schools will play on these traditional new outdoor turf fields with the of course the football and the soccer options out there a beautiful turf here at Alumni Stadium in Independence Appreciate everyone tuning in on OhioVarsity.com here tonight. This one should be one that goes down to the wire. These two teams have been entrenched in battle since 2008, and Independence holds the subtle advantage in record with six wins, Wycliffe with five wins, and there are three ties between both of these two teams. But in terms of goals between both teams in this matchup, both teams have scored 22 goals throughout the uh, series between these both both of these Chagrin Valley Conference opponents as well. So very, very equal when it turn when it comes to the amount of goals scored throughout the years. And they've played already this year. Independence won that matchup two to zero right here at Alumni Field at Stan Scotian Stadium. Kevin, the last time you broadcast an Independence Wycliffe game, it kinda was lopsided, if I remember correctly. Yes, for uh, for Chagrin Valley Conference TV, CBC TV, that was a football matchup, and Wycliffe that night they were the they got the win in the matchup of Blue Devils, 41 to two in that ball game. Morgan Gabriel with an early opportunity trying to slide it past the keeper and just hits the outside of the near post and hits the other ball that they had available there for one that may trickle far away from the fence just so they can get the ball back and play quickly. Ball girls doing a great job of getting these, uh, getting the soccer balls back in play for them. But Morgan with an early opportunity, and we mentioned it, Steve, for Wycliffe to, to have some success here tonight. 
that's got to be the catalyst. Oh, absolutely. And independence, that's a big mistake by them to allow her to break free that way. They're going to have to tighten up their defense a little bit. And obviously she's a player they're trying to mark up as often as possible. And, of course, Wycliffe will come out in a 3-2-3-2. Three, two, three, two. So they'll have three defenders, two what they call up defenders, kind of playing one will kind of – help out with the offense, kind of trail behind the offense to give a little bit more support up there, and they'll switch off throughout the game. That would be Annabella Storr and Jamie Orndoff here tonight in those positions as Raquel DiGeronimo wins possession in the midfield, has a step over, able to get it out to, at, uh, out to McGee. McGee trying to send it back in the middle. Good defense by Wycliffe early on, but only as far as the 35-yard line, and Independence will go back to this possession that they are trying to get those through runs right through the middle. Haven't seen a lot of balls go outside just yet. A lot of space out there for both teams to operate. Both coaches will be stressing that throughout the ball game as well. DiGeronimo trying to beat two defenders there. Cross coming in. Storr able to get that clear and come out to Morgan Gabriel. Yeah, this is something that we saw Independence come out slow last week in a uh, regular season match against Berkshire. They lost 2-1. to one. They came out really slow, but at about that 10-minute mark, they started to work through the midfield a little bit more. They scored a goal and took a 1-0 lead. But then the second half, they kind of reverted back to not playing well through the midfield, and Berkshire went on to score two goals to win that match. So Independence early trying to find some offense. As a early foul comes in, two players going for headers there. Mia Wilms for Wycliffe will be called for that foul as Rachel Bielitz was in on that as well. A little too aggressive getting up there and uh, kind of cutting over the top of Bielitz was Wilms. So free kick for Independence. And Steve, you're, you're right. The uh, Independence will definitely be able to work through the, through the midfield here tonight, that's going to be their goal. And used to have Di Geronimo when she was just starting out in her early career, kind of more up top as that goal scoring opportunity. But now she has worked on those foot skills, put a lot of work into that during the off season and uh, maybe some club seasons as well, and has been able to drop back in that midfield and be a catalyst for their offense and then get her own opportunities as well. Yeah, and Raquel is just a terrific athlete, three-sport star here at Independence, uh, phenomenal basketball player as well. So she, she's just an athlete out there that works hard. She's aggressive, physical, and just plays hard. As Addie Westerberg will sub in the sophomore with one goal and one assist on the season for Independence. She uh, replaces Hannah McRailed off of, the, off of the field there. And a long throw in coming here for Independence. Haynes able to get that clear, kind of off her side of the foot, so it'll be another throw in for Independence. It looks like Westerberg will come in and have the early responsibilities for these long throw-ins, and that causes some havoc in the inside that box when you have someone that you can throw deep in there, almost like a corner off of a throw-in, and that just makes it more, gives you more scoring opportunities throughout the throughout the match. And Wycliffe trying to get it clear, playing through the midfield, but not able to get much over their own half-field line just yet. Liza Wills will try to uh, get this one wide, but deflects and goes right to uh, Independence. Good control here by the two up defenders there between Orndorff and Storr. Wilms trying to get it out wide to Wills. Eliza Wills, the freshman, Trying to get it inside to Megan Andrakovich. You're going to see a couple sister sister connections here tonight for Wycliffe as well as Independence. It's a soccer really is a family affair. Once you once you get into it, the families really start to start to take it on. And Wycliffe and Independence are two communities that have really taken to a, a sport that yes is popular worldwide, but not as popular here in the United States of America. But have a, done a great job to develop. Not just a football culture or basketball culture, one of the two, one of the major sports, but they have great athletic programs all around. Yeah, and you mentioned that family affair it makes it easy on broadcasters. You can mm -hmm. say Westerberg or Adams <sighs> or Andr Andrikovich and pretty much nail it, uh, at least be pretty close. You don't mess up the names quite as much, so that's nice. It's always nice to be able to, you know, just take a guess, just put one name out there and you're most likely going to be right. And you just stick to, with, stick with the last names. You don't have to necessarily go with the first names all the time. And, you know, at some point, 
you see the number and you, you, you give them their credit so they get well represented because these are kids that don't get to be on TV very often in this, these kind of spotlights. So well deserved, well earned for their hard work that they put in. Well, that was a nice setup there by Nowak getting it out to McGee. And McGee will send it back here to Geronimo and back. They'll try to reset back to uh, Sophie George. And this ball will come out all the way to the far sideline where it tips off of uh, looking across the field there, trying to see the, the number. It looked like uh, Rachel Bielitz tipped off her foot. And Morgan running down, skirting down this far sideline, trying to get inside. Goes down, no contact. Referee saying to get up a little bit of some slippage there on that turf, it appeared. And ball will go into Belito, uh, Belito's hands and off go Independence. Well, the Independence fans have to kind of wipe their brow after that one. The Wycliffe fans obviously aren't too happy, thought they should have gotten a call, but uh, I think Independence got away with one there, not necessarily on the foul call, but on a breakaway from Morgan Gabriel. Again, you don't want her breaking free. Have you? It's one thing to have a soccer team kind of break it down by their possession because there's going to be points where each team is going to have their opportunities. If they're able to possess and break it down and get you on your heels, then those opportunities will come. But if one player is able to beat you on the dribble and get behind and have those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, that's coach's kind of aggravation or nightmare there when they are preaching defense for both of their squads. So Megan Andrikovich gets dispossessed and some space there. As they get it inside to Elena Nowak and this one will be cleared up to Eliza Wills for Wycliffe. Trying to send it inside, but pass going up in the air. Wanted, probably looking for Morgan on the ground there to try to cut through, and that one will go out of play. Yeah, we've seen Nowak get a few touches on the ball. That's somebody Independence is very excited about. She's a freshman. Uh, just, you know, we're going to talk more about this Independence senior class and the Wycliffe mm -hmm. senior class, but. This is where uh, Raquel D. Geronimo and Rachel Bielis and Paige Westerberg and McKenna Meeke were as freshmen. They were very exciting players too. And now they're gonna pass the torch and Elena Nowak is somebody that's gonna pick up that torch and run with it. Yeah, Independence does a great job of replenishing talent. While you'd never wanna see your seniors leave and all that they've contributed. And like you said, Steve, we will talk about two great senior classes for both schools here in just a little bit, but to have those kind of senior leaders and then you have some young talent coming up where the pressure really isn't on them, they can get used to the speed of the high school game, makes it a whole lot easier to kind of find their niche and develop as a player for the program. Shot coming in from deep from Mia Wellms just takes one hop into Belito's hands and that one will be sent away to midfield to Nowak. Wellms tracking back after that shot to win that ball for Wycliffe. Trying to find Gabriel, trying to turn to Wills, but not able to get that last touch on it. Kind of a 50-50 ball there, won by Independence. Trying to find uh, Nowak there in the middle, and they'll just roll into the box. So both keepers challenged a couple times early, but a couple shots going just wide, so no major... Concerning save is made just yet by either side, but you have two stalwarts in goal on both sides with L'Oreal and Belito. And a foul opportunity here, a free kick setup as Independence will have this one just outside the 18 yard box. And taking this for Independence will be Rachel Bielitz. And these are those free kick opportunities, those set piece opportunities that you really want to take advantage of in games like this. And they try to get it over to De Geronimo, a set play that they've definitely worked on in training, in practice, but the wall does its job for Wycliffe that time and able to get it clear, but right comes back Independence and they get it out wide for the first time tonight. This one coming all the way across to McGee. McGee trying to find someone making a run towards that back post and just over the bar, not able to get over top of it. That one goes over the bar, and with 21 minutes left here in the first half, we remain scoreless, but that was the early, early opportunity that Independence was looking for coming off the foot of Alex Adams. Right, and Alex Adams, she's been on fire. She had a couple of goals the other day in a win. Uh, yeah, she had a point-blank shot there. She's definitely going to look at that one and want that back. 
sometimes you look at it and you, you see yourself so wide open and you just you put a little bit too much on it you just you want to get that in the back of the net and uh she'll be kicking herself for that one but plenty of time to get another opportunity and with her track record already this season for putting the ball in the back of the net for independence I'm sure those opportunities will come and she'll be ready for the next one to capitalize for for independence Another foul for Wycliffe. So that's three early fouls and, and free kick opportunities. One with danger, but you start to amount those and you start to get close to those yellow cards as well. Players that may not have two dangers of a foul, but accumulate two or three in a certain stretch of time or a short stretch of time in the game. Referees will track that and would have to pull that player off for a yellow card in that kind of case. Kevin, we've seen two different styles here today. Uh, Wycliffe seems to be relying on that fast break opportunity with Morgan Gabriel. Independence is working a lot through the midfield and, and setting up their offense. How does that affect a game? Well, for Wycliffe, when you're trying to send those balls over the top into your offense, and I know that Coach Gribovitz will be talking about this and probably preaching on the sideline right now, he still wants his team to possess just like Independence is doing. That can That can cause a lot of energy to be drained because you're defending for so long and you're just trying to send one or two players deep all the time to make those 30, 40 yard sprints. And later on in the game, when you need them most, you know, they are well conditioned to play throughout the game, but you don't want to wear them down. And th that late opportunity that could be the difference, you don't want them to uh, be broken down or too tired by that point. For Independence, they are doing exactly what they want to do. They are possessing in the midfield. They are getting these opportunities. Shots from deep, just like G. Geronimo there, off of her left foot and just not able to get around it enough to sneak it in that near post. But again, like I just said, Steve, Independence is has their game plan working to perfection right now, getting the opportunities that they want right there in the midfield between Nowak, D. Geronimo, even McGee out here on the left-hand side. So Independence's coach Brian Less has to be happy. He just wants to see those finishes happen because the longer, longer you take to get a finish, sometimes the more frustration can set in throughout the match. Absolutely, and, and we saw it a lot uh, last week uh, against Berkshire where – Independence had a lot of opportunities. They only had the one goal to show for it at halftime, and they felt really good going into the half, but then they came out, and the momentum flipped, and Berkshire scored two and won the game. So a deep throw here for Independence. Hannah McRail will be throwing this one in for Independence. Andrew Kovic trying to get that one clear to be followed up by Wills, and that one goes out of bounds as Emily was trying to find her sister Eliza up top, the uh, junior and freshman there for Wycliffe. As that throw-in will come in as well for Independence, and they're getting a lot of these opportunities for throw-ins, free kicks deep in their, in their offensive third, and those opportunities are going to happen. And we will let our one of our sponsors tell you about their business. Inside Alumni Field, and we want to thank our sponsors here tonight to uh, helping us get this live feed on, allowing those from of you at home to watch safely, of course, in the area that we're in, Independence and Wycliffe tied at zero with 17 minutes left here in the first half. But Independence on the attack there, and Katrina Haynes able to just get her body in front of that one and send that one out of bounds. And a matchup between two teams that know each other well. Steve mentioned earlier, Independence won a defensive slugfest earlier on in this season in CBC Chagrin Valley Conference play two to nothing but uh, trying to get trying to take earlier control as Wycliffe had kind of played a similar game playing a lot of defense trying to get those counter opportunities those break opportunities for their players up top right now you have Claire Andrakovich up top with Morgan Gabriel as Eliza Wills uh, kind of sinks back in the midfield a little bit for them and the Andrew Kovic twins, the senior twins, Macy and Megan, had come back into the game as well during that uh, sponsorship 
period. As Wycliffe trying to get some pressure and keep that ball in their offensive third, but having to chase a lot and Independence able to just get that one touch by and then they get that possession going. As this one will come up to Nowak for Independence, she'll drive it back to D. Geronimo. Geronimo back to Nowak. And they're kind of working that one too. And this one will be dropped back to Sophie George. Being pressured there by Macy Andrakovich. Some even contest there, and they will call that a throw in for Wycliffe. Boy, just a moment ago, Independence fans, their heart had to drop when uh, Maria Bolito kind of spun that ball off of her foot. Hmm. Fortunately for the Blue Devils, they were able to clear that ball, but uh, a rare mistake by Maria, and I don't really want to call it a mistake. She went to boot it out of there hmm. and kind of just spun off the toe of her foot. Oh, in my playing day, Steve, trust me, those those happen more often than you realize. The the ones you feel like you're going to get the best touch on, and those are the ones that go off your foot. And then you get shocked because later on in the game, you get this, what you think is a terrible opportunity, but you're just trying to get anything towards net, and you end up getting this perfect touch, and it just goes in the back of the net, and it's one of the best, most shocking feelings in the game of soccer as a player. Absolutely. Here we are, 15 minutes left in the first half, still scoreless. And that's what that's what Wycliffe wants to do. They do want to play. They do want to defend. And they will, uh, Coach Grubovitz and Coach Stevens over there, his assistant. They will. They preach defense all the time. And I know that uh, Coach Les does as well. But you know, in soccer, sometimes your best defense is actually your offense. If you're able to possess and keep getting opportunities, at some point it's going to break for you. I know that uh, Wycliffe would like to get a little bit more possession, a little bit more time of possession on this clock to get some more opportunities up top and get some more players forward instead of having to sink so many back in the box as we see right here. Annabella Storr able to just get that one clear. And Eliza Wills will follow up, being sent back into the box across the other side of the field. Looks like uh, Hannah McRailed getting this one out wide and trying to work that one two. De Geronimo picking up the loose ball in the middle. Orndorff on defense in front of her, and Emily Wills will clear this time. And on this turf, that will roll out of bounds. Yeah, Independence has had a ton of time to set something up in front of the goal. There are just a lot of bodies in there, so it's hard for them to get a real good look. But they've got to be happy with the way they're possessing the ball. And I know that that's one thing that, you know, as, as a coach, when you have these many opportunities and still being 0-0 in this game, whether on the sideline right now or if it at halftime, Coach Les will be preaching, you're getting the opportunities, you just got to stay calm, put one in the back of the net. Again, as young players, that frustration can be sent in when you get so many opportunities to score and you just can't get one to, to go for you. You want to, these coaches do a great job of keeping these student athletes, these young student athletes level-headed and fully entwined in the game and keeping them mentally tough. There's a little bit of an opportunity for Wycliffe with a breakout. That ball rolled out of bounds, so throw in for the Blue Devils wearing white tonight. Yeah, what used to be home uniforms versus away uniforms, the Ohio High School Athletic Association did change a couple years ago, and your dark uniforms in soccer are now your home uniforms and most of the other sports as well. And your white uniforms or uh, light colored uniforms are now your away. And Storr able to come from her defensive position there, getting an opportunity for Wycliffe and just clearing that away. That was a good one, two up the left sideline. And that's what, that's what Coach Grubovitz is preaching. He's trying to get those defenders or up defenders, almost basically defensive midfielders, an opportunity to go forward and support the attack so that you have more numbers before Independence can get back. That one looked like it tipped off of McKenna McGee's foot there. So Jamie Orndorff will throw in. She'll actually hand it off to Macy Andrakovich and Morgan Gabriel will get a breather here with 11 and a half minutes left here in the first half. No score. Eliza Wills comes into the game. And... Raquel DiGeronimo will just quickly win that ball back for Independence. Well, this is the opportunity that Independence needs to take advantage of with Morgan Gabriel taking a quick breather for that, that final 10-minute 
stretch run, when you take a player off like Gabriel off the field, that's when you've got to try and strike. And Independence still having their uh, senior spotlighted individual out there in Raquel Di Geronimo. And definitely, as you said, Steve, time to time to try to strike, as you want don't want to let some of the younger players for Wycliffe or what Coach Les is going to preach don't have that senior leader up top right now. So you definitely want to try to strike when that moment is there for you. But you still have the other uh, big senior for Wycliffe in goal right now, and she's going to be directing that defense. She is going to be that captain leader out there right now directing that defense and trying to get these, uh, some of these younger players into those scoring opportunities. Yeah, that's quite a, a lineup for uh, Coach Gribovitz over there to have Morgan Gabriel on the offensive end and Kaylee Loriel on the defensive end. That's like having a, a pair of coaches on the field as well as two talented players. And someone that, uh, someone back there as well, right in front of Kaylee, uh, Maddie Figuerko is how you say that last name. Uh, as uh, the PA announcer in Wycliffe, Scott Tennant, will always make sure that he gets, he's always on top of that and always preach that to me when I was just working with him for a little while. And uh, having that sweeper back there, that person in the middle of defense, whether for Wycliffe or Independence, that's where you need to be the extension of the extension, basically. So you want your goalkeepers to be ex the extension of the coach, and then you want that sweeper to kind of help uh, clear things away if maybe one defender may get beat down a the sideline. They're there to cover that up. You go recover middle, and you got your defensive shape fully intact the entire time. And we have a goal kick here for Independence. We have ticked under the 10 minutes to go mark. 9.20 left on the uh, scoreboard off to our left in the far left corner of this stadium from where we are situated atop the Independent side up in the press box here. As Macy Andrakovich will hand off to Mia Welms and we'll have a sub coming back in. So Morgan Gabriel just a brief rest there and she will uh, come right back into the ballgame. Give a quick shout out to our camera operators tonight, Wendy Patton and Chelsea Hare. Can't have a broadcast without the camera operators. Steve, great minds think alike. We were <laughs> just about to say the exact same thing. You can't. The grunt of the work is done behind the scenes. I'm just, a, I'm just putting a voice through a microphone right now. And thank you so much, Steve, for all the work you're doing behind the scenes as well. While uh, help me out on color here tonight. So I'm trying to present this game best way we can here on ohiovarsity.com and two schools that looking to try to get to the district semis here coming up in division three are definitely doing battle here and still nil nil with eight minutes left here in the first half and neither team finding that breakthrough just yet and while we do have a moment while they get that goal kick going to kind of highlight both of these senior classes steve I mean, you look at the record for Independence this senior class, 44 wins, 24 losses, 5 ties, while Wycliffe has 48 wins, 18 losses, and 6 ties. Wycliffe only needs 2 wins to tie the record for most wins in a senior class with 50, as Wycliffe has an opportunity down here, down the sideline, but good defending on this near side. Uh, looked like Casey Adams able to sweep that one away before Macy Andrakovich could get in front of that one. Uh, but on Independence's side, they have a postseason record, 8-3, and three in, and they had their first district title and regional final appearance in school history last season after they got that win, that overtime win. They went on to win another game in the regional semi and got beat by a state powerhouse, Kirtland, in that regional final last season. Yeah, these are two great senior classes. These are program-changing classes. Uh, you know, you look, they've had some individual success throughout the years, but the, the four-year spans that these two classes have put together, one for each side, uh, just amazing. And it's what you build off. It's what you need to develop a feeder program. And so the success that these seniors have enjoyed over their four years career is going to trickle down to the next class and the class after that. And, and hopefully we just see uh, soccer in the area continue to grow and, and you know, become more competitive in, in all the schools. Yeah, Independence and Wycliffe are two communities that, uh, you know, kind of go back and forth with having travel programs as well so they can get the players at a 
higher level of competition together, build that chemistry early on before they get into the middle school or high school age when they decide to play for the school at that time. And also players playing club. You know, they're not allowed to play for a travel team or a club team as a high school or a school athlete, even at the middle school level during the fall season if you want to play for the school. But during the spring and those off-season workouts to keep those skills fresh, a lot of these players will go play travel or club for, you know, programs like uh, Croatia Juniors and uh, CSA, Cleveland Select, clubs like that to keep those skills fresh and stay on top of their game for the next seasons. Rachel uh, or uh, Raquel DiGeronimo gets clear, trying to go for that near post and just skirting wide. Kaylee L'Oreal had that covered, but trying to get that quick shot just by L'Oreal was DiGeronimo, and she's had some opportunities here, Steve, to kind of shoot from deep and then kind of play off of that and get some other girls involved inside that box. Right, and just like Independence's defense allowing Gabriel to have a couple breakaways, you don't want to allow Raquel DiGeronimo too many opportunities with the ball in front of the net. Eventually, the ice is going to break. Independence winning this one back and on the attack here once again. DiGeronimo back on that ball right in the middle of the, in the park. She'll get it out to McGee, and they're trying to do that give and go between her and DiGeronimo, but not able to get a solid touch on that, and that just bounce, takes a couple bounces into the waiting arms of L'Oreal, and she gets this one away for Wycliffe, trying to set something up, but right there again, that defensive line for Independence is pushing up to midfield, and they are winning those 50-50 opportunities, Steve, and coaches will tell you, as a soccer player, tell you all the time, team that wins the most 50-50 balls tends to win the game. Well, I tell you, almost every time I talk to a coach after a game, uh, that's what they talk about is, yeah, we won the 50-50 balls and, and we won 3-0. to zero. You know, and, and the coaches that lose, it's like, yeah, we were losing the 50-50 balls. So, yeah, that's where it all starts is you've got to be able to, to steal possession, maintain possession, and, and use that possession to create some scoring opportunities. And an interesting warm-up there for Independence. I mean, they're used to this turf, and, of course, on turf, whether it rains or not, it's going to be slick. The balls, you can kind of shoot it low and skid it off this turf. And it's nice and pristine, but Independence still working on ball control on this on this field as they were having some players bounce balls to, the, to a teammate and try to trap control and then attack. And they have been kind of following that warm-up to a T here to gain these opportunities that they've had early in this match. And we tick under uh, almost to the three-and-a-half-minute mark here in the first half, still goalless, but Independence definitely controlling in their offensive end of the field. And Wycliffe, you've got to compliment their defense, mm -hmm. uh, especially Kaylee L'Oreal, who's uh, commanding everything back there. She's the quarterback of that defensive third. And, you know, there's uh, when you've got a player with as much experience and talent as you do with her back there, uh, that's not a bad thing to have. And you've seen it tonight. The defense has held its own, uh, given up far too many shots any coach would like to see. But, uh, you know, so far they've been able to hold off that independence attack. And it's what coaches will preach all the time just staying in front keeping the making sure you don't cross over those feet that's why you work on those side shuffles as some agility work before before games before practices you know keeping those just like def, uh, defense in basketball again if anybody's out there tuning into a soccer match for one of the first times you're going to defend in soccer it's basically the same way in the game of basketball you just want to stay on your feet you want to stay in front and kind of try to get them to a sideline so that they are trapped over there and have little room to work and have most of, if not three quarters or 80% of the field cut off from them. Independence gaining possession there in the middle of the field. That one will go over to McKenna Rinney, trying to get that one up the sideline. That will just go over the yellow line on that far side. And Megan Andrakovich will throw back for Wycliffe. And that'll be a handball off of Morgan Gabriel. That one took one of those awkward bounces off of this turf kind of up at her as she was trying to control with the foot. Kind of went up near the head, and that hand kind of got in the way. So back come Independence with this free kick. I think outside the box, they shouldn't even call handball, unless it's a blatant attempt at stopping the ball you know and that was an inadvertent contact just kind of bounce just play through that it's not giving anyone an advantage 
You know, Steve, this isn't uh, this isn't anything against all our officials. Our officials are trained well, and they do a great job here in Northeast Ohio and all around state of Ohio uh, for uh, refereeing, refereeing soccer. But you see some more of those handballs or like ticky tack fouls outside the box. It's where it really starts to clamp down. You see very limited or little PK opportunities that you end up seeing in a game. Those rarely happen because there's they the referees know that there's a little bit more contact. It's much more compact. So there's just some things that kind of go on in there. Unless it's blatant, they will not call it in there. But out here, they tend to call it a little bit more often. Megan, able, Megan Andrakovich able to use her head there and just get that one clear. And Wycliffe, at this point, with 40 seconds to go, most likely trying to get this ball clear and go to halftime 0-0 on the road and try to reset their offensive attack here as well as defense, as you said, Steve, has been on point tonight, getting those balls clear. A couple opportunities from deep for independence that they would probably, some of them would want back, but Wycliffe doing what they need to do to defend and try to get those counterattack opportunities for their offense. Right, and that's where Berkshire had some success uh, last week in that two to one win here at independence. It was the counterattack that created their offensive opportunities. And the PA announcer here at Independence will tick down, and we have hit triple zeros at halftime here. And we will take a quick break with Independence and Wycliffe nodded at zeros. Gable Search Group, owned by Mike Stuck and headquartered in Willoughby, has been a leader in search and placement nationwide since 2002. The company specializes in both direct and contract staffing in all industries and disciplines. Each highly trained and experienced member of the Gable Search Group sales and recruiting team is committed to identifying a company's needs and providing them with the most marketable candidate to fit their goals. Gable Search Group is a member of the top echelon network, the largest network of search firms in the United States with over 1,500 recruiters. Having this many recruiters at its fingertips allows the Gable Search Group to fill any role a hiring manager needs anywhere in the United States, thus making them a leader in finding qualified candidates for hiring managers and great jobs for its clients. Call 440-951-9990 or visit the company's website at www.gablesearch.com. Also, you can email mstuck at gablesearch.com for more information. Mike Stuck and his amazing team will get you on the right path today. Yeah, he loves Gable Search Group, owned by Mike Stuck and headquartered Gable. The Pixel Connection is Northeast Ohio's premier camera store, servicing photographers and videographers for over five years. Did you know that you can rent professional cameras and lenses at a fraction of the cost of buying the equipment? There's no reason you can't capture those game-winning moments. To save 25% on your next rental, use the code OhioVarsity at checkout. View their rental selections at rentals.thepixelconnection.com. And welcome back inside Alumni Field at Stan Skosen Stadiums here in Independence, Ohio. Kevin Arnold alongside Steve Hare for this sectional final matchup here in the playoffs for the Ohio High School Athletic Association soccer playoffs on the girls' side of things. As the host Independence Blue Devils are tied with the traveling Wycliffe Blue Devils, CBC fellow opponents there here, 0-0 at halftime. And Steve, we've talked throughout the throughout the broadcast. Independence doing a great job in that first half of getting their opportunities together. Haven't capitalized on one just yet, but they have been working that ball through the midfield, thanks to their senior Raquel Di Geronimo, and getting that ball out to uh, players like Elena Nowak as well, and getting those opportunities. Wycliffe just trying to try to spring that counterattack. Yeah, Independence really has possessed the ball well in the first half. Uh, this is something they struggled with last week in the game against Berkshire that we broadcast. They picked it up right around that 15 minute mark and they were able to score a goal. Came out in the second half a little bit cold again and never found that momentum. So it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what happens here in the second half tonight. Wycliffe, great defense and they've had a couple of breakaway opportunities which has to scare the heck out of independence when you see a player with morgan gabriel's uh, ability to you know just find the net uh, when she's breaking free like that so i'm sure coach less is down there talking about making some adjustments on defense take some better angles at cutting off gabriel and then on the offensive end i don't think there's much else you can do other than just keep you know tell the girls to keep shooting eventually they'll find the net 
And one thing I'm, I'm sure Coach Les is telling the girls as well is, you know, make sure don't let up on attacking the goal. When a shot comes in from deep, you know, Kaylee L'Oreal for Wycliffe doing a great job in net as well as Maria Valido for Independence. But when those shots come in, if there's one they have to deflect away, they're not able to grab securely in their hands right away. You always want to be following up on shots because you never know when one of those opportunities could lay right in front of you to just tap home for the early breakthrough there. And uh, Steve, Steve, Coach Steve Gribovitz on the Wycliffe side, what is he telling those girls over there? I think he's going to tell them the same thing Coach Les is, but just in reverse, same thing. They're they're doing what they want to do. They're getting the, those balls out to Morgan Gabriel. I think they need to play a little bit tighter in the midfield. You don't want Independence. You know, if Independence is working in between the 30 and the 50-yard line, I think you're okay, and that's going to give you a great opportunity for those breakouts with uh, Morgan Gabriel. Independence is sliding a little bit closer to the goal than, than I think most coaches would like. When they're playing inside the 20 and setting up their offense, they're going to get some pretty good luck. So I think he's probably going to make some adjustments there and, and try to keep uh, Independence closer to midfield rather than working down toward the net. Yeah, and you see a lot of that, a lot of space between, you know, you have Eliza Wills and Morgan Gabriel who started this game for Wycliffe, a freshman and a senior kind of, you know, one learning from the other with those opportunities kind of playing up top, being that, that go-to forward. And you want your forwards to be to be strong, be able to win possession, maybe check back to the ball a little bit, uh, kind of some of those give and goes, and then win the ball in front of the net to put home some opportunities. But there is a lot of this green turf between the defense for Wycliffe and then those two up top. So uh, astute eye there from you, Steve, with – that, that space in the midfield, wanting to close that down and be a, be a little bit more spaced out, be able to defend in those small spaces and get out to the shooters when Independence tries to shoot from deep, but close down that offense so that there's more connecting passes. What they what we talk about in soccer, soccer all, the wall, all the time is you want to be able to connect those passes from you want to start be able to start with your goalkeeper and connect from defense to midfield to forwards and be able to work that ball from side to side and get some of those some more of those opportunities and put a little bit more pressure on the defense instead of just having to worry about one or two players up top and um, not not as many players able to support because they're so far back playing defense. All right, let's take one more quick look at the first half stats. Again, the score here at. Uh, Alumni Field at Stan Scogin Stadium in Independence. It's zero to zero. Wycliffe with two shots on goal. Independence with six. Zero corner kicks so far, which is, I think, pretty key in soccer mm -hmm. when you get those set piece opportunities. So it'd be interesting to see if uh, a, a team can create some of those opportunities, take advantage of them. Three fouls to zero for Wycliffe and one save apiece unofficially. Had a couple of shots from mm -hmm. Independence, just not between the pipes. Kaylee L'Oreal uh, did. Uh, pull up the the one shot on goal so that's that's where we're at here at halftime I did take a peek at the next game the winner advances to play either Chippewa or Northwestern Chippewa is leading that game two to zero they already have two wins over Northwestern this year so I think that's a pretty comfortable two to zero lead hmm. which means the winner of this game will travel to Chippewa whereas there was a chance one of the teams could host if Northwestern pulled the upset yeah, and that's one of those, I mean, it's tough to play a team, what it sounds like there in, in uh, Chippewa there, uh, play a team three times. But when you kind of have a system that works, a formula that works, it's going to, you know, you can still take care of business there. Here, you got two teams that know each other well, and it's always going to be close, uh, no matter the, uh, you know, kind of the experience, senior-laden experience or not on either squad, both School programs know each other very well, and we mentioned it kind of off the top there towards the beginning of the game, Steve. I mean, Independence has a uh, has six wins in this matchup since 2008. Wycliffe has five, and there's been three ties, but both teams scoring a total of 22 goals in this matchup. So it just go it goes back and forth, and that's I mean you would expect that in the if you're going to call it the Battle of the Blue Devils, you're going to expect something close like that, but. Truly, these two schools are just those, those two programs that just match up so well against each other. 
And when you are so familiar with each other, it, it's not hard to have competitive matchups like this because you know their style, you know what, what to expect. You don't have to really scout because mm -hmm. you see them. You, you, you're just so familiar with the teams over the course. Like I said, these senior classes, these girls have now played against each other five times. So, you know, they're, they're familiar with each other. They know who the top players are on each team. They know who to guard. They know who's got the good left foot, the good right foot. So, yeah, you, you know, seeing these two teams compete against uh, each other every year and having competitive games isn't a big surprise. And up until this game, I mean, the most impactful matchup between these two schools came last year, as we mentioned, out at Strongsville High School on a neutral field where Independence came away with the win 2-1. to one. And as they're given the overtime rules here, uh, they're going to go through this second half, and if – Score remains tied. You go through two golden goal 15-minute periods there. So basically if someone scores at any point, even if they score in the first five seconds there, then they would be uh, uh, able to take the win there without having to play any of the rest of those 30 minutes of overtime period. As uh, we do have a player for Wycliffe down the other side uh, getting stretched out by uh, some of the training staff that did come with Wycliffe over there. Um, but like we said, last year, the, the district final, Independence kind of getting that early breakthrough, what they haven't been able to do yet in this game. They got the early breakthrough, and Wycliffe kind of tied it up late, and then only a couple minutes left on that overtime clock before possibly going into some penalty shootouts. They were able to, uh, Independence was able to get that, slot that one goal home and move on to the regional tournament. Just saw an early score, a final. Kirtland defeated Cornerstone Christian 9-0. So the Hornets will advance. And that's the that's the pinnacle program right there, Steve. Kirtland and what uh, Coach Ed Braddock has done over there at Kirtland. You know, you lose. That's one of those programs where, yeah, you may lose some seniors, but those freshmen, those young players we kind of talked about in this game, get those opportunities early on and they are just they just feed right into that system he has set over there. Yeah, and that's, you know, I talked about that with these senior classes and the success that they've had. Well, that's what it took at Kirtland is mm. they started to have younger players step up. They got a lot of experience and so by the time they were juniors and seniors, they were among the most competitive programs in the area. Then they had that breakthrough and now it's it's just a culture that they've developed over there and that's what Wycliffe and Independence have done here in in recent years. And it and it's definitely the culture and maybe you see the rosters not being as big at some of these smaller schools or D3 schools, but it's setting that culture so that when the kind of those sophomores, juniors, those upperclassmen that move up in the ranks of leadership on your team. When they when you get into those off-season workouts starting in starting in June and July when you got the the training, the conditioning, they are they're already preaching what coach is going to say throughout the season, so it's already ingrained in those young players' minds once they get out there on the field. It looks like we have our uh, almost had our first corner kick opportunity there, but that that another one that kind of Tips off an Independence player, and that will go for a goal kick for Wycliffe. I was going to say, I was going to say, we saw that early in the mm -hmm. half, but that got waved off, and it'll be a, a goal kick. And, Steve, that, that whole culture conversation, I mean, just even from what you've seen in covering a lot of high school sports in your time as well, the impact that that has on student athletes, not just on the playing surface, but also off of it. Oh, absolutely. And we've talked about family and, and, you know, there are so many sets of sisters on the team. Well, that's the case at a lot of small schools. Kirtland has had that. I've been covering Kirtland now for almost 10 years and I've covered siblings. I, I remember seeing some of these kids as, as little kids coming to watch their high school aged uh, brother or sister. And, and, and that's what it takes is, you know, the, the small schools, especially the, the community buys in, the families buy in and they all believe in the same goal. And, and you see the results in these small schools that are having a lot of success and it just carries over. And I tell this story all the time with Kirtland football. I mean, you look at the by the time a, a Kirtland junior or senior, you know, reaches that level, mm -hmm. they've played so much varsity football because they're playing in the second half of most games because of the running clock and the, the 30 point margin. And, you know, that that's experience that you can't get otherwise and you know a lot of kids have to wait until their juniors or seniors to see varsity action and so they come with a little bit of nervousness that doesn't happen at Kirtland you by the time you're a junior and senior you've already played a full year of varsity football 
Yeah, it's it's learning those little things in those moments that you get a chance to get that experience. As uh, De Geronimo kind of got clipped from behind there, but uh, getting a little bit of the ball there. Annabella, Annabella Store able to get that one clear. And then out here from Emily Wills causing a throw in. And that'll be thrown in by Hannah McBrailed. And we've seen some of these longer throw ins for Independence trying to set up almost a corner kick set piece on these long throw ins. Yeah, last week, Independence off their first few corner kicks, they played a little short ball and then tried to set something up. Then they played a, a little bit longer, put a ball in front of the net. And so you saw a lot of different ways that they tried to take advantage of a set piece. And tonight it'll be interesting to see which strategy they employ if they do get that opportunity. And one of the best opportunities there coming for Wycliffe down the uh, far sideline now, it was uh, Morgan Gabriel able to win that ball in midfield and sprung Macy Andrakovich loose, was trying to get across there to Eliza Wills, just wasn't able to cut across the defender's face in time to win that one and Independence able to get that clear. But Wycliffe doing a better job of pressing a little bit higher with this defense to try to win these balls, win these 50-50 balls, and you know that both coaches preach that at halftime, Steve. Oh, absolutely. And, and again, we go back to the possession that Independence had in the first half. They had really nothing to, to you know, improve upon in that area they possessed the ball they were able to set up their offense they just have to finish off some of those shots and then Wycliffe on the other hand you want to try and cut off some of those angles that Independence had taken and uh, try and create a few more opportunities for Morgan Gabriel and some of the other goal scorers for for the Wycliffe Blue Devils and a good angle there is Elena Nowak had cut back there on one of Wycliffe's defenders Katrina Haynes and she was able to Keep that, uh, keep that position that you were just talking about there, Steve, and able to quickly recover, not, not allow any sort of free cross or shot coming in on her goalie's net. But Independence will come back in possession here, and another long shot will go wide. A little bit ambitious from that far out, kind of off kilter, a little bit off balance there was uh, Alex Adams, but the goal, goal scoring prowess that she has shown this season at uh, you know, as a junior for uh, for Independence, you know, I'm sure Coach Les is going to live with that because I'm sure she's gotten some better opportunities at that same distance throughout the year. She sure has, and like I said, she's been on a tear of late. Her and her sister Casey both, uh, I think, combined for uh, seven goals in their last two games or five goals in their last two games. So, obviously, a couple girls they want to get going. As Megan Andrakovich trying to spring Morgan Gabriel free down here and there's looks, that corner kick yep we get our first corner kick already uh 46 minutes into this game as we have gotten six minutes into this second half 34 minutes left still tied 0-0 but probably the best opportunity set piece opportunity that we have seen from Wycliffe here this evening as that ball will be floated in trying to get their head on it and it goes in the back of the net that one just skirting off of a head trying to see who was able to get that one home but Wycliffe on the first set piece that they have deep in their offensive third they're able to get that one past Maria Bolito and it looks like Mia Welms is the goal scorer and that assist will go to Morgan Gabriel so again the catalyst Morgan able to spring her fellow senior Mia Welms and Wycliffe takes an early 1-0 lead. Well, we talked about those set pieces, and, you know, it's such a great opportunity for you to try and score. Wick, uh, Independence had a free kick earlier, and here uh, Wycliffe had their first corner kick and made the most of it. And, uh, Steve, I know you mentioned that uh, off the top of the broadcast that, you know, from my uh, experience playing and coaching in the city of Wycliffe, a um, little bit more kind of knowledge on their basis, but I'm sure this is the same, uh, this is the same for Independence as, they're trying to get an opportunity here, and it looks like a free kick. They'll get a, a set-piece opportunity here. But Wycliffe, and I'm sure Independence does it too, at their, at their practices, they've been working for several years on those set-pieces, on those corners, to get players not as afraid in the ball, go win in the air and be the first one to it, just get something towards net, and good things happen. Absolutely. Independence wants something good to happen right here. And this shot coming in, and... Kaylee doing her work to get across her the face of goal, but that one kept curling wide left off the foot of Alex Adams. 
And that'll go out of bounds for another goal kick for Wycliffe. 32 minutes left, just a little bit over 32 minutes left in this match. Wycliffe getting the goal off of the head of Mia Wilms for an early, uh, for an early lead here in the second half of 1-0. Only 30 minutes left, though. Independence will most likely start to push and start to try to go a little bit quicker on some of those possession-based elements they had going in the first half in midfield, Steve. Right, and I think the key for Independence right now is just not to panic. That's the first goal they've allowed against Wycliffe since 2019, that overtime contest in the postseason. So out of the last four games, actually the last, uh, yeah, the last four games, that's the first goal Wycliffe has scored in regulation and, for, for Independence, they just can't panic. They've got the talent, they've got the goal scorers, and they've been able to create some opportunities. They just have to finish them. And there was another one. Uh, I think Alex Adams might have been able to take that shot a little bit earlier before she dished it off to Westerberg, who went a little bit high. Yeah, and Adams, kind of the the catalyst right now for Independence in the second half. We saw Raquel DiGeronimo in the first half, and now it's Alex Adams kind of trying to impose her will through the middle and uh, – Figuerco, the sweeper for Wycliffe, able to just get in front of that one. And I mean, you said to kind of keep their composure, keep their heads in it. And actually, Independence doing a great job of that because coaches will preach to you the first two minutes after a goal is scored. One team is kind of at the highest of highs after scoring. Another team maybe dropped their head for a second. You want to be that team that controls the next two minutes because an early opportunity to get right back in the match can happen for you, and Independence already pushing for that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, and I've talked to so many coaches, and they say it's that last four minutes, last four or five minutes of a half, and then, you know, that, that brief period of time after a goal is scored because you're either high or low, and, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities could happen. And Wycliffe trying to go two on four here as Eliza Wills tries to spring Morgan Gabriel free, but defender doing a great job of just getting in the path of Morgan's run towards the ball and allowing her goalkeeper, Maria Bolito, to pick that one up and send it away. But uh, I'm sure on both sidelines, both coaches telling their players, take a deep breath. A lot of time left in this match, and Wycliffe's going to have to stay aggressive with their game plan that they came in with. They can't get too... Uh, out of shape defensively, and Independence wants to just continue to build on that, on those opportunities and possess in the midfield because you do have some time to still methodically set up an opportunity from time to time here for this match. Right, Independence has had its opportunities. They just have to keep at it, keep plugging away. Eventually, you know, one of those shots might find the net. You can't get frustrated because when you start to get frustrated, uh, you're not playing at your best. You panic a little bit. And right there, that was a great example of the calmness that Coach Les brings to this this team. And I'm sure on the other sideline for Coach Gerbovitz as well. But he goes over and tells Alex Adams, who took that shot and that went through the uprights for the football team, kind of at a – at an, at an odd angle, he said, I like that idea, but maybe take it down sideline. Let's try to cross that one in and get some runners there to get some of these defenders off of their spots. And looks like Independence will get their first corner kick of the ball game. So we'll look to see if they can kind of do exactly what Wycliffe just did. Put that ball right in the center of the box, just outside that small box that you see there, kind of intertwined in the Blue Devil lettering in the end zone down there, that six-yard box. You want it just outside right at the top as runners filter in. That's exactly what Wycliffe just did. And we'll see if Independence can match that here as we have a couple subs coming in. Looks like coming back in the ballgame, Paige Westerberg checking back in for Independence as Megan Andrakovich able to clear that one only as far as outside the 18-yard box for Wycliffe. And back on it for uh, Independence. Looked like uh, uh, Paige Westerberg had jumped on that one for him, and Addie Westerberg actually checked back in for them. So there's one of those instances, Steve, where you get the last name, but going with the first name a little bit too quickly. That's the second time that I, I got a little concerned with the Independence defense allowing that ball to get through. But then I look who's back there. That was Paige Westerberg. Uh, the the one before that was Rachel Bielitz. Those are two seniors that they know what they're doing. So, you know, allowing that ball to get through, they shielded the uh, Wycliffe offensive player and allowed Maria Bolito to clean up the loose ball. 
And you'll and you'll hear the crowd get all uh, all into it when they see kind of one move or, or one player kind of get free. But as easily as you get off your spot in soccer, you can quickly get right back into position by and the attention to detail that both of these teams have been coached to play with allows both defenses to play as strong as they have. Even in maybe some nervy moments out there, you know that someone else is going to come recover for you, you have confidence in your teammates to do that, and then you're able to get back in your position as well and reset. At what point as a coach, at what point do you start to panic a little bit uh, when you're down a goal? Uh, in this case, it's one goal, but in other cases, you might be down two or three. But at what point do you start to panic when the, when the clock's running low? I mean, internally, there may be a little bit of panic once you get down to, especially in this kind of case, a one-goal lead as Morgan Gabriel will try to shoot from deep and just skirting off the, the front of her left foot, not able to wrap the foot around it to bend that one in the far post. And, but Wycliffe definitely on the press there, a little bit more confidence growing after that goal by Mia Wilms. But to your, to your point there and to your question there, Steve, maybe internally there may be a subtle nervy moment for you as a coach when you get down to the 10 or even five minute mark of a game like this because you know how quickly you can get end to end in a sport like soccer. But externally, you are staying as calm as possible. You're taking those extra deep breaths to make sure your team stays entwined in the game and taking those extra deep breaths because for a team that's up, you know, you start to play a little bit tighter. And for a team that's down, you're gonna open up. You're gonna try to take advantage of some more opportunities. So you wanna try to keep these players' heads as even keel as possible. And I know Coach Les and Coach Grubitz do an excellent job of that mental, the mental side of the game as much as physical. You know, one of the things that surprised me tonight is Independence is playing a more possession style of game Whereas I've seen them in the past where they've been trying to play the ball to the outside a little bit more. They've got so much speed with Paige Westerberg and uh, Alex Adams and McKenna McGee. And they've just played a lot, uh, a lot of possession style, trying to keep everything through the middle. Is that a, a, something that they, they know from Wycliffe, that there's a weakness there? I'm not going to say necessarily weakness. It might be something that they saw in film that there might be a little bit more room in the middle there to break them down, get them off their spots. Uh, move them with the pass. Of course, the ball always moves faster by the pass than the dribble. But it's also, I think, a credit to, and it's something that, you know, coaching against independence for so long, yes, they always try to get the ball out wide and just play direct, almost like Wycliffe's trying to do. Balls up over the top to maybe that one or two targets that you have up top to spring them on a counterattack. But with some more experience and some more balance amongst the age groups and getting contributions amongst the freshmen through senior classes here and building that culture here at Independence. Looks like they're trying to really now establish that possession style culture and allow that to maybe develop throughout a season and take that on to the future as well. Yeah, it's certainly nice to see out of Independence because I've covered them for, for eight or nine years now too. And I've seen a lot more, uh, you know, of I don't want to call it kickball, but they do try to go over the top a little bit more. So the last few uh, games that I've seen, they've been able to control the ball in the midfield a little bit. And I think that speaks volumes to the, the development of the program. And I know on the other side for Wycliffe, as, as part of the Wycliffe coaching tree in the city, it's something that I'm sure the independence coaches in this community as well have preached for a long time. They're starting to see the fruits of it. Wycliffe has been preaching that possession style soccer for a long time as well and you know starting to get some numbers for both the boys and girls programs over there uh, revamping those once again we're only a two or three years removed from Wycliffe having their uh, uh, biggest roster in program history of 32 girls I believe that was back in 2017 or 2018 that they had that many girls on their roster but uh, you know trying to preach the same thing that Independence does. And that's why these two teams match up so well, because they have similar styles and trying to develop these players in the same kind of manner. Yeah, and those numbers certainly don't hurt. <laughs> and that's, that's you know, one of the strengths of the Kirtland football team is they get 60, 70 kids for a small school program. That's really impressive. And so when you can bring 30 girls out to a Division three soccer program, you, you know, that's going to benefit you in the long run. And I believe Wycliffe is down to 16 or 17 now. They have a, do have a couple of players injured, not able to play this season either. Uh, as Independence has an opportunity, they get a cross in. Ball kind of just laying out there for Independence in the box. Wycliffe trying to get it clear, struggling there. But there's that senior 
captain in the back there in front of her goalkeeper, Maddie Sfigerko, clearing that one out, allowing the defense to take that quick deep breath and reset. But, uh, yeah, so I believe they have 16 or 17 this year, but look for Wycliffe's program and I possibly even, if memory serves me correctly, Independence's program maybe to pick up in some numbers over the next couple years as well based on what's in the middle school or that 7th and 8th grade kind of range for talent coming up here in the next couple years. I hope so. I mean, the girls' soccer in general in Northeast Ohio isn't old, so these programs are relatively young. I believe Wycliffe started somewhere around 2008, and, and Independence was a year or two before. So they've, they've come a long way, and I'd hate to see them take a step back because numbers are going down. As Megan Andrew is trying to win that ball, just kind of tipping off of her foot, but that'll go out of bounds for another Wycliffe throw, and Mia Wellens will have that throw. Uh, Steve, do we have a word from one of our sponsors right now? Actually, we got a word from the Wycliffe Blue Team. You're watching high school soccer on Shot those uh, these promo videos before the game, so I want to appreciate the Wycliffe Blue Devils for their support in that moment, and we'll get back to the Independence uh, promo video here shortly. And we'll try to get that one in, yes, very, very soon here for you, because I know, especially at this end of the field, Independence is going to be trying to play quick. Tempo and pressure in this game is going to start to pick up, so we'll try to get that message in there as well. Uh, the, the, both programs doing a great job in helping us out as we uh, highlight the hard work they've put in all season long. Good throw into the feet of Raquel DiGeronimo, but good defending there by Jamie Orndaw. And those uh, two up defenders allowing the three defenders in the back to kind of find those runners in the box, mark up. But this one will go out for a corner kick, and looks like Independence will try to set up some. Uh, they do try to play this short corner type game from time to time. But Wickless ready for putting Megan about 10 yards away from the corner kick taking. And Emily Wills, great defensive effort there on D. Geronimo trying to get it clear. But that defense for Independence continues to push that half line in, in front of it more and more as the minutes tick on. As we are about halfway through this second half, Wycliffe with a 1-0 lead over Independence in this sectional final looking to move on to district play. That really was a great defensive play down there. Uh, Raquel D. Geronimo was about to launch into that ball with her dangerous left foot, and the Wycliffe player was able to get in front of it and almost created a nice counterattack. And handball there by Independence, so this will allow... Wycliffe to push some numbers forward as Figuerco will come up and kick this one away and try to put a little bit more pressure, get that ball deeper through the neutral area on the soccer field and try to get it, try to possess a little bit more in the offensive third. But quickly, again, defense has been the staple for both these programs for, for a while, and they are playing well on both sides here tonight. Yeah, Wycliffe comes in tonight having lost the, the first matchup 2-0. to zero. Obviously, they didn't let that game carry over into this one. They've played really well tonight. They've got the only goal of the night. Hitting this, uh, we're under 20 minutes now. They've got to be feeling very confident. So I think they learned a lot from that first matchup. And right now, if they can play uh, the, the same type of defense for the next 18 minutes and 55 seconds, they could be seeing Doylestown Chippewa next week. And a little confusion there, but uh, this will be a corner opportunity. We saw what Wickliffe was able to do on their first corner opportunity. Morgan will look to serve this one in from the other side, the other corner. This will be an in-swinger. Her right foot will swing this ball in towards, towards the goal, and those runners will be looking to try to get their head or something outside of their arms and their hands on this ball towards the net. And uh, Independence kind of marking up a little bit closer than they did the last time to get in front of these uh, these runners. Looks like Shayla Landy will come in for Wicca for the first time. Emily Wills will get her first break of the game, and they will switch Jamie Orndoff back to this left defender position. Landy will go up and play alongside Annabella Store at that up defender position. So an in-swinging ball comes in from Morgan Gabriel and better clearance there, only out to the feet of Gabriel. She's going to try to send this one back in and right into the waiting arms 
of Maria Bolito covering her near post well on that one. So an opportunity for Wycliffe goes awry there and they will try to reset on defense as Independence tries to quickly break out now and you're starting to see that tempo pick up little by little there. Let's get our word from the Independence Blue Devils here before this throw-in. You're watching High School Soccer on OhioVarsity.com. And we're back. I do appreciate the girls taking a moment out of their warm-ups to create those promo videos for us. And Adams trying to penetrate the middle of that Wycliffe defense, able to do some of the work herself. The back line of Wycliffe waiting there, but some little bit more nervy moments there as Kaylee comes out of her box to control and pick that one up, kind of taking out her own teammate there, Macy Andrikovich. But these players have been playing together for a long time. They know how aggressive Kaylee is in her box, and Macy just able to jump over her just slightly to avoid any sort of contact between teammates. Yeah, it's just the second time Independence and Wycliffe are meeting in the postseason. 2019 was that overtime game, and Wycliffe trying to even up the record in that postseason play. And Adams had gone from her position in the midfield there and taking that ball out wide, trying to get her left foot on it, not able to get enough. And again, Kaylee coming off of her line well. Both goalkeepers have been coming off their line well here today. You saw a couple of attempts at some chips by Wycliffe early in this match, but uh, Maria Bolito for Independence was having none of that, and she was just in great position to tip that one over the bar if need be or get right in front of it and send it right back into her offense to keep their attack going. As Emily Wills returns for Wycliffe and trying to see who can, it looks like uh, uh, Shayla Landy comes back out of the ball game. So a quick little breather there for the last little bit as we are at 15 and a half minutes to go. Wycliffe leading 1-0 on the road at Independence in this Battle of the Blue Devils and this sectional final matchup trying to reach the district semis for only the fourth time in program history. Morgan Gabriel kind of dropping back more in the midfield now to win that ball, trying to get one inside on a through ball to Macy Andrikovic, not able to do so, but doing a good job after she lost the ball to win it back. Both teams have been doing that all night long. The, the aggressiveness, the, the attention to detail, Steve, again, we've, we've preached it kind of all night long by both of these teams. They make one mistake, and they're ready to pounce on that and make a good play or a couple good plays in a row for their team. Absolutely, and I think that's been the key. Uh, Wycliffe uh, off that corner kick, that's just attention to detail, executing a set play. They've had, uh, you know, they saw independence down in their zone uh, quite a bit, and they were able to execute their defense and, and take the right angles. you got a great goalkeeper. And then on the flip side, independence just haven't, hasn't been able to finish off their shots. And so when it comes down to executing, they've had the opportunity. They just haven't been able to, to get that uh, one touch that they need, and there's your difference. And you can definitely see things have tightened up just a little bit as the ball is being played a little bit more through the air. Neither team really able to get control. Independence has kind of gone away, Steve, from that, that possession in the midfield. They're trying to play more direct uh, and understandably so trying to get that one goal back and you know able to get tied up and then have some time to try to win it as well. But uh, still able to get some possession. You're able to possess with a purpose more as the tempo picks up, but they've kind of just been playing that ball up and playing in Wycliffe's hands, they just keep playing that ball up over the top as well. Eliza Wills wins this one, trying to get a through ball and a good switch of the field to Macy Andrikovich. She's got a little bit of space trying to cross that one in and almost took a bounce towards that back post, almost took a, an unfortunate roll there for Independence. Eliza Wills trying to get to that back post, just not there in time. That one will go out for a goal kick, but that's some of the possession that I know Coach Gribovitz has been uh, preaching as well, try to win the ball on the ground in the midfield. And when that space is there on the opposite side of the field, get it switched to your two speedsters on the outside, the Andrikovich twins. And I think that's what you're going to have to see Independence do here is get the, the ball out to the outside. You see number 16 there, Elena Nowak, the fast freshman. You've got Paige Westerberg, 22 on the outside. 
And I think uh, here as we hit that 10 minute mark, you're gonna see a little more frantic pace by independents and they're gonna have to look to go outside in instead of inside down. And Claire Andrakovich, the uh, sophomore sister of the two twins, the two senior twins, Macy and Megan, she returns this game to give Mia Wilms a brief break. And I know that Wycliffe tries to use Mia in that midfield as well. She's kind of the one that's all over the field. One of those athletes you talked about, Steve, that you may, you're able to get out for some of these sports and maybe not necessarily having all of the soccer experience, but when you get an athlete out there that develops the sport and it starts to come naturally to them, that's who you want out there on the field because you know they're just going to get involved in any sort of 50-50 ball, any sort of element to try to win the game for their team. Right, that's one thing you can't coach is aggressiveness, competitiveness. You can't coach that. Kids have it or they don't. They can develop it over the course of their careers just uh, by, by playing harder and getting that, that sense of urgency and, and – uh, really buying into the the competition and but yeah when you see the kids that come out and have that uh, those you can't have enough of those kids on your team and there again Wycliffe able to kind of push some numbers forward so right now until they really start to drop those numbers back to help defend here 11 23 left on the clock here in the second half and in this game Wycliffe leading one nothing they're kind of taking this middle 10 minutes of that last 20 to try to push some numbers forward, maybe try to get that second goal, get that two goal lead, and then they may start to push some numbers or bring some numbers back to help on defense for that last seven to 10 minutes as well. And good pressure there by Claire Andrakovich to force Independence to kick that one out. In the first half, Steve, that was the kind of ball where Independence was able to win it on defense and just send it right back in the field of play instead of having to clear it out. Right, and I think we, we talked at halftime about making some of those adjustments, and, and I think we've seen that on the Wycliffe side. They've come out and have taken advantage of, of some of those loose balls that went Independence's way earlier. And now Wycliffe's, I, I don't want to say they've possessed it a little bit more, but they've had more opportunity down here inside of Independence's 30. They've put a little bit more pressure at that 50-yard line midfield to win some more of these 50-50 balls and then they get that one long pass out because there's just so much space to work with. They've been playing on one side of the field for most of the game. Independence's defense has kind of shifted over to them, and now they're kind of trying to take advantage of that on the other side. Right, we talked about Morgan Gabriel and the, the two big opportunities she had in the first half, that Independence was going to have to adjust to that, and I think they did, but I think that's freed up some of the other Wycliffe players to, to make some breakaways and get some good looks at the net. And Steve, we've kind of entered that, that nervy time there as Eliza Wills tries to get across and goes off an independence defender on the far side there, able to get in front, do her job, allow the defense to set. We go back to this uh, corner kick opportunity for Wycliffe, and this time Megan Andrakovich will take this off her left foot. So this will be an in-swinger from the opposite side as it looks like Morgan getting a brief break over there on the sideline as Mia Wilms had re-entered the game. 9.25 left, Wycliffe up 1-0, looking for more here on this corner kick and so, trying to get someone's head on that, and that one just skirts all the way through. And neither Wycliffe or Independence able to take over until Jamie Orndorff able to take advantage over here on the far side. And Independence will just clear and reset on defense again. You know, here's one of the sad things I'm thinking about now as we're under that 10-minute that mark We've talked about the success of these two senior classes, and it's unfortunate one of them, this is going to be their final game. But it is a great game, and uh, just the success that both both uh, class of 2021 groups here for Independence and Wycliffe, uh, it's, get, like we said, it's a program changer. They've had great careers. Uh, it's just sad to see one of them, this is going to be their final game. It's always it's always tough when it's the, when it's the final game, but both teams pushing to keep playing and move on to that district semi as Morgan Gabriel will come back into the game and she sprints over to this near corner to take this one off of her right foot. And she will curl this one in in a beautiful area for Wycliffe. Again, not able to get ahead on it, but it, but better defending from the first time, from the first corner by Independence. But now those corners are starting, starting to mount up. That's either the uh, fifth or sixth corner from Wycliffe here in this second half and in the in the match. Yeah, that's the fifth one for Wycliffe and Independence has had two this half. So after neither team could come up with a corner in the first half, we've had seven here in the first 33 minutes. 
And the crucial point about this is not just trying to get another goal there, but as the minutes tick on, we're at 7.45 to go. Wycliffe able to control in their offensive third, which is what they, what they kind of want right now. Absolutely, and they don't have to be in a hurry when they're down here. If they can burn off 30 or 40 seconds. As the header goes in, and Mia Wilms gets her second of the game. A glancing blow, ticked to the far post, off the cross from Megan Andrakovich. And Steve, Wycliffe has been getting that space, that time and space on the sideline, and that amounts to a goal in the run of play. That player we talked about, just a little bit ago, Mia Wilms, who was all over the place and has developed her soccer skills throughout the year, puts Wycliffe on top 2 nothing with 7.25 left. We talked about independence and all the opportunities they had earlier, and we said eventually one of those might break through. Well, that's what's happened for Wycliffe here in the second half. They've started to get more opportunities, and as you get those opportunities, eventually that ice is going to break. Morgan Gabriel too aggressive there on defense, and Independence will send this one long, try to get as quick of an opportunity as possible now and look for Independence now, Steve, to just try those try to play the balls up over the top to Raquella and Nowak to try to win, make one move, and get a shot off on Kaylee L'Oreal. The key to this game already has been opportunities and capitalizing on those opportunities. That's what, it, that's what this game of soccer really comes down to. Absolutely, and a shot comes in from deep from Independence, and Kaylee L'Oreal just lets it kind of bounce right in front of her, jumps on top as Independence goes to pressure her and force her to pick that one up and have the only the six seconds to get rid of that ball. Yeah, so Independence now down to its final 6.15 here, and, you know, we talked about a frantic pace earlier that they were going to have to... Uh, put into this game and now it's going to be even a little bit more intense as Independence able to win that one off of the foot of Emily Wills and Wycliffe doing a good job of just clearing that out and you've already you started to see it now now they got that two goal lead Steve and they only have one person up top and Morgan will now sink in and help on defense along with the Andrew Kovic twins and that midfield they're going to help on defense and try to allow that speed to get away from a player and then send it deep onto the other side of the field and force Maria Bolito to jump on top of it and send it back in for her team. Yeah, and Wycliffe already is very difficult to score on. They've got a great defense. Now you've got a two-goal lead, and you can throw some extra defenders back there. Very tall order for Independence. And shot from deep there by... D. Geronimo off of her right foot. Looked like it may have been going out of bounds, but L'Oreal taking no chances there. Covers that far post and gets that one sent away. And Steve, you kind of talked about when does a coach start to feel those nervy moments. Well, internally, after that second goal went in, that's that when you're in a one-goal game and the you're the team trying to press to get one and you allow the op opposing team to get one in the run of play, to put a two-goal lead on you, that's when those nerves really start to hit internally. And Morgan will try this one from deep, trying to get around that one. And Belito on top of that one quickly and rolls this one out to Di Geronimo, who will check back deeper to win that ball and try to win possession. And she was trying to uh, – felt like she got clipped from uh, through by Mia Wilms that ball was won, but Di Geronimo is down, and you hope for the best for her uh, kind of going down on the ground and onto this turf that has a little bit of give to it, but not always a lot. And at these high school programs, the uh, training staffs for both schools and for all Northeast Ohio schools, we are blessed to have great uh, medical facilities Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, Lake Health, all of those programs there that supply the athletic trainers to all of these programs and to keep these athletes as safe as possible. And you just you hope for the best for Raquel out there in what could be a uh, final match for her as a senior, as a leader for this independence team. On that note, let's take a quick break and thank our presenting sponsor, Gable's Search Group. Gable's Search Group, owned by Mike Stuck and headquartered in Willoughby, 
has been a leader in search and placement nationwide since 2002. The company specializes in both direct and contract staffing in all industries and disciplines. Each highly trained and experienced member of the Gable Search Group sales and recruiting team is committed to identifying a company's needs and providing them with the most marketable candidate to fit their goals. Gable Search Group is a member of the top echelon network, the largest network of search firms in the United States with over 1,500 recruiters. Having this many recruiters at its fingertips allows the Gable Search Group to fill any role a hiring manager needs anywhere in the United States, thus making them a leader in finding qualified candidates for hiring managers and great jobs for its clients. Call 440-951-9990 or visit the company's website at www.gablesearch.com. Also, you can email mstuck at gablesearch.com for more information. Mike Stuck and his amazing team will get you on the right path today. Premier Camera Store, servicing photographers and videographers for over five years. Did you know that you can rent professional cameras and lenses at a fraction of the cost of buying the equipment? There's no reason you can't capture those game-winning moments. To save 25% on your next rental, use the code OhioVarsity at checkout. View their rental selections at rentals.thepixelconnection.com. Four thirteen remaining here at Stan Scotian Stadium at Alumni Field in Independence. Wycliffe with a two to zero lead. Kevin, we've got four minutes. If you're Independence and you're down two goals, how do you try to equalize this game? Well, once uh, once play does resume, is uh, you know all the best out to uh, De Geronimo there uh, for Independence. As soon as this ball gets back in, you're going to start to send numbers forward. You're going to get one of your players that can uh, really get a free kick or send balls deep into their own end. You know, coaches, of course, talk about clearing, ball, uh, uh, clearing balls deep to the other side of the field as a defender. But now you're going to get one of those players behind the ball and try to send it in. You're going to try to push numbers forward and try to get as many of your players on the field, the 10 on the field that are able to do so, even to a certain extent, maybe on some set pieces, your goalie coming forward to try to get one and then two. 4-13 doesn't look like a lot of time, but in the game of soccer, a lot can happen in a matter of seconds, let alone a matter of minutes as we have left in this game. And again, of course, thank you to our sponsors here tonight, Gables Search Group and uh, Pixel Connection here tonight to allow us to bring this sectional final matchup to you. And we are back underway as that clock resumes to tick here. We have hit the four minute mark. And that four minutes of soccer that Steve Hare preached earlier in this game, both teams are under that scenario where Wycliffe can be trying to defend and stay in front in these four minutes and just allow as many moments to tick off the clock as possible before any scoring opportunity may occur for Independence. Independence is gonna to try to just play as direct as possible, getting players forward like right here, getting a shot and may have been deflected off of Figuerco, but getting that shot was Casey Adams and she's pushing up a little bit more than we've seen in this game so far. And we'll have a corner kick now for Independence. They have not yet pushed the goalie forward, but they have not, uh, eight of their ten players up to try to win this one with one player kind of trailing behind if one comes out to send a shot or a cross back in. And Kaylee L'Oreal for Wycliffe doing an excellent job to avoid all the congestion there in her box. Comes forward, collects it, and sends it away for one of her teammates to just try to chase and delay in the offensive third. But Independence will quick, quickly come back. Tick under three minutes to go, 2.48 left on the clock, and a throw-in opportunity for Independence. Alex Adams will throw this one down the line, getting it into Nowak, and right back to Adams, and that one deflects off her foot. Eliza Wills doing a good job up top for Wycliffe, playing strong with her back to goal, trying to win that ball. And they were trying to cross that one from Megan Andrakovich to Morgan Gabriel, but quickly into Independence's offensive third they go. And that ticks off of Nowak, so it'll be a deep throw in for Wycliffe and Independence pushing number forward.
to try to win this one as deep in their offensive third as possible and get these opportunities. Two minutes left on the clock. Wycliffe leading 2-0 on the road at Independence. Battle of the Blue Devils and trying to get back in the win column in this series, trying to tie the amount of wins between these both schools up at two apiece. And a shot comes in from Nowak in the center. Just not enough on it. And Gloriel goes down to the ground to collect that one, lets her box clear, and punts this one away for Wycliffe. With two defenders around her, Eliza Will is able to win that one. And Wycliffe trying to just pressure this ball and just force Independence to kick, kick it away as they do there. And Macy Andrakovich will throw in, and the minutes, seconds continue to tick off this clock. Trying to work a 1-2 between Wills and Gabriel and back up the sideline, but back for a throw in comes Wycliffe. We have now hit the one minute to go mark, so just seconds left in this game. Wycliffe trying to hold on and move on to their fourth district semi in program history. Independence trying to come back and move on for the seventh time in their history. Store winning that ball for Wycliffe, trying to get in front, but Adams able to just get by. Good recovery there from Annabella, but Adams able to get by her again. Good recovery for Wycliffe's defense. 30 seconds left. Emily Wills up the sideline, just trying to clear it. Take as much time off that clock as possible. And a foul in the back. Again, what you want to see from your forwards, playing strong keeping that defender behind him and forcing them to make a th uh, play through your body and causing a foul there. Ten seconds left. Svigerko will just kick this one away. And with a couple seconds ticking off here, Wycliffe getting a huge road victory, and they will move on. And not sure what the score was there, Steve, but most likely facing Chippewa in the district semi here in division three region nine a well-earned victory and independence had their opportunities were not able to capitalize in the first half and wickliffe capitalizes on two corner uh one corner kick and one cross off the head of mia Wilms to take the two nothing win here this evening as we see some pleasantries and sportsmanship exchange between both squads uh, unlike the handshakes of the past, of course, in COVID-19 era, you must stay as socially distanced outside of play as possible. Steve, thoughts as we wind this one down here tonight? I knew it was going to be a great game. I was actually talking to another coach the other night about this game, and I knew it could go either way. I mean, these are two competitive teams. They're always competitive against each other. Uh, this one, Wycliffe needed some things to go its way, and they, they created those opportunities. We talked about the set pieces at halftime. Wycliffe uh, scored right off of their first set piece, and uh, that was the difference in the game. Once you get that, that one goal lead, you're playing a little bit more relaxed, especially with the defense that uh, – Wycliffe possesses. It just took away some opportunities for Independence. Independence had their chances early, had a lot of shots on goal, not really on frame, but uh, you know at least in the direction. And a uh, couple went high, a couple went wide. And those are the things when you look at breaks. You need those breaks, especially in the playoffs. And I think the key to this one was that first two minutes after that corner kick goal was scored by Mia Wilms. Wycliffe's defense had a couple nervy moments, but took a deep breath, took control of the game very quickly, and they were able to get that strong defense going once again and were able to capitalize on one more. So two goals for the senior Mia Wilms, and she goes to 11 goals on the season and 20 in her career at Wycliffe. And, of course, as you look at the independent sideline as well, you know, you feel for the seniors in their last game here tonight. But, you know, student athletes to have an opportunity to go through and still have a senior year is Ohio wearing their mask and able to still have seasons here. So have some other opportunities, some other events and some other things. But, of course, having that last soccer match or that last event for your uh, one of your favorite sports or favorite events is always tough. But a well-fought game and a great program that is going to continue to do great things in independence. But tonight... It is the Blue Devils of Wycliffe High School who will move on to the district semis 
after a 2-0 victory over Independence. We want to thank our sponsors here tonight, Gable Search Group and Pixel Connection. For Steve Hare, I am Kevin Arnold signing off for this evening. Hoping you all have a wonderful evening from us here at Alumni Field at Stan Skosen Stadium. Your final, Wycliffe 2, Independence nothing. Have a great night, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.